And Martin writes, Dear Emily and Bagpuss, a strange day in Portsmouth. The faint aroma of frustration hangs in the ether, but there would seem to be something else afoot. All is not right. The dogs sniff the air and paw at doors. Urchins cower in the archways and refuse their blue pop. Fishermen report the catching of strange bug-eyed creatures of the deep, which snap and froth, and ah, the fishermen feel omens. Omens perhaps of forthcoming darkness. Will he who shall not be named the dark angel himself rise to once more stalk the land and call his faithful to him? Where is this going? (laughs) Just bear bear with it. Page one. Our ancient, nameless, Lovecraftian horrors to rise from their sleep of ages and crawl forth from the bowels of the earth to wreak horror upon us. Does an unseen asteroid speed towards us, promising death and destruction to all? No, tis worse than all of these. A new Reese Witherspoon Vince Vaughn film is out, which in itself is pretty grim, but it isn't so much the film, but the collateral damage we fear. We know what this means. Mount Kermode is about to blow. Take shelter, duck and cover. Check your home insurance and building cover. Yours as ever, Martin. Is there a new Vince Vaughn? Vince there is, and you know, I'm not going to get that exercised about it because it's almost. Look, last year, remember, it was Christmas Please is coming. Don't Fred Claus, remember that? Dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> really was, wasn't but it? Not as bad as the. Well, okay, so now. Not as bad as the uh, Jack Frost thing. Remember that? Snow Dad's better than No Dad. <laughs> That's just my favourite tagline. That's up there with he knows if you've been bad or good and he's got a chainsaw. It's very um, good. So now, uh, Christmas, Christmas has come around again. So uh, Vince Vaughn, uh, you know, he's obviously not busy. And uh, the, unique, the USP, unique selling point this time, is Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon, who appears to be following the Halle Berry mode of win an Oscar and then torch career, right? Because Halle Berry, after that Oscar for Monsters Ball, wasn't it? Then made Catwoman and Gothica and things went a little bit pear-shaped. And, you know, in the case of Reese Witherspoon, since she she did win for Waterline, didn't she? She did win. I'm sure she won. We've had since then... You looked at me there, film critic. Yes, I know. But I'm pretty sure she did. She is. I seem to remember from the... Uh Angelina Jolie research. Mm. That has yeah. to, don't look at the clock like that. As I've just no, no, I wasn't looking at the clock. Sorry, I was. Is that she? Reese Witherspoon is the most expensive uh, actress, if you want, in a movie. Really? She gets the most per movie than any other actress. Because Angelina Jolie's up, is up there in the twenty million, isn't? It? I think there's only five. Actresses Reese is around. number one. Is she? Carry on. Mm, okay. Well, that's about to come plummeting <laughs> down around her ears. Come take me. She made Just Like Heaven. She made Penelope. There was something else really, really terrible recently. Oh, she was in Rendition, which of course didn't do any business at all. But now here's the. So here's you can just see the Hollywood executives. This is what's evil, right? This is what's actually evil about this. There's a hideous thing with Hollywood movies, and a classic example of it is his Jingle All the Way, a crassly commercially exploitative movie about the crass commercial exploitation of Christmas. You know, Arnold running around, I've got to get a turbo man, I've got to get a turbo man. Oh, Christmas is so, it's so crassly commercial and exploitative. Let's make a film about it in that way. He's, okay, he's got a bit Swedish there, obviously, OK? So this is a film which is, in which there's Reese Witherspoon and Vince Vaughn. They play this couple who always go away at Christmas to be away from their horrible family, right? Because family, horrible, horrible, horrible family, let's get away. And so they pretend, they say that they're going on humanitarian missions to do stuff, you know, with starving children, right? But they're not. They're going on holidays to go scuba diving. But this year, they get snowed in and plot cronk ahoy. Arrgh! Whilst waiting in the airport, they get seen by the local TV crew. And every one of their relatives is watching the television. Cronk! So, for the remainder of the movie, they have to go see all four relatives and spend four Christmases with their respectively... Hence the title. Four Christmases. See what they did there? Yes. Should we have a clip? No. I feel we have All to. Right, Go on. Brad. Baby. I don't want to fight. I mean, I don't want to fight either. We never this. fight, honey. I'm sorry. I love you. Mm-hmm. This is what our families do. You know that. This is what happens. My mother makes me crazy every time I talk to her. You're absolutely right. Here's all we got to do is we just got to get through these four Christmases as quickly and as painlessly as possible. Exactly. Promise me that no matter what happens today, we'll still have each other, right? Honey, of course we will. Key phrase there, we've got to get through these four Christmases as quickly and painfully as possible, painlessly as possible. You'll be all going, yep, I know. There are some movies, it's very dangerous putting a number in the title of a movie, okay? A brilliant example of doing it right is Richard Curtis's Four Weddings and a Funeral, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's great. You know there's four weddings and a funeral, but 
you love all of them and you don't want them to be over and also you think that the wedding that turns out to be you think it's the other way around even if it was supposed to be called Toffs on Heat Toffs on Heat which, which is, is a better true. title yeah Four Weddings have been a brilliant title however Four Christmases is one of those movies in which you just find yourself which one are we on two has he done two has he got, has he got another two to go blimey really it's difficult three. to count a four can it no no but it's not this well it is because what's happening is that your brain looks at the screen through your eyes and goes Nothing happening there. Wake me up in a minute, okay? And you have to, you, you literally, you sit, everything starts to shut down. You know, if you if you get buried in snow, right? No. Yeah, you, you know what snow is. Yes. Snow dad's better than no dad. If you get buried in snow, you start to shut down from the outside in. Right? I think it's called, you know, hypothermia or something, right? But watching Four Christmases is kind of a similar experience because you sit down and what happens is everything starts, everything just goes, nothing's happening. It's like it's like we're in Alien, we're going to be travelling for five years now, I might as well go into, you know, hypersleep or whatever it is. So everything starts put, to shut down. Put an interesting pair of pants on and just lie That's under That's right, you know, bed. so your fingers stop and your feet stop and everything starts to stop when you go, and you're looking at the screen, you're going, well, have you, has he done, what's he done? He's gone to see, he's gone to see uh, Robert Duvall, he's gone to see Sissy Spacek, he's gone to see, he's gone to see John Voight, and everything just stops because you know, laugh are not a hoy, but worse than that, you know that what's happened with the actors who are, you know, fairly talented. Sissy Space, it's good, good performer. Obviously, I, I thought that Reese Witherspoon was absolutely brilliant and walked the line. What they've done is this: they've gone, you know, there's a credit crunch coming, and Christmas is going to be really expensive, and because all, all these Christmas movies are all shot in June, that's how you do it. That's the word. The most cynical thing about them is they're made in the summer. You know, it's going to be expensive Christmas, so we'd better do a Christmas movie, yeah, because I, I hear there's a credit crash coming. I mean, the bro- bottom's falling out of the property market, so we'll do it. No, it's terrible. Obviously, it's not funny. And, and nothing, but it doesn't matter. Every is Sissy around here? She's against okay. John Voight around. He'd be fine. Yeah. That whole Vince, camp thing, very Vince strong. Vince is there, you know. Very strong. And this is so. What you're effectively watching is somebody's investment portfolio. That's it. You're watching their Christmas uh, bonus box. You're just what? And literally, the looks that they have on their faces as they're doing this thing is uh, where are we? Fifteen million, whatever it is. That's all it is. So it's like watching people earning money to pay for their Christmas. Now, that's your idea of fun. Terrific. Last time I paid to see that in the cinema was, you know, it, well, actually it was Fred Claus for because you know that Vince Vaughn's not that much of an idiot. I mean, really, Do nobody's we? that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. He, I mean, he made dodgeball. He's made he made swingers, and of course there are moments in this film in which he's together on screen with John Favreau. And you're looking at John Favreau and Vince Vaughn, you think, I tell you, if you were sitting in that lounge in swingers, and I said, guys, you know what you're going to be doing in 15 years' time? Look at Four Christmases. I tell you, they would have taken themselves out into the street right away and dealt with that problem. Well, <clears throat> it just yeah. crushing. But More? worse, of all, well, yeah, yeah. worse of all, the thing about you remember I said Sex and the City is a film that spends its entire running time ramming handbags down your throat, and then has the gall to say, you know what? There's more to life than handbags and in the case of Four Christmases it's a movie that spends its entire time going you know family horrible family horrible family horrible family horrible and then goes you know what we all love family. We all because, love family. Because John Voight, right, who's crawled out of some sewer somewhere, you know. And Imagine John Voight waiting to welcome goes, you back. He comes in, no, but he comes in and he goes, Hi, Angelina. Hi. Yeah, no, don't. And he goes, he goes, you know, because the thing is, there's nothing more important than family. Now, normally, okay, just brain at this point, would have, my brain would have just gone, bing, tear response, boom, crash. But in this case, my brain went, nope. Sorry, not ha- no, not nothing at all. Because usually you evoke family, and I will have a little bit of a, an emotional response. But in this case, seriously, Ernest from you know Christmas Lake could have run around with a chainsaw; it wouldn't have made any difference at all. It's stinky and horrible, and it is just a savings plan. And I'm really glad that they've got all that money in the bank while everyone else is you know watching the bottom drop out of the market. But it's like watching the news about the stock market crashing. It's that exciting. This Christmas, just say no to Vince Vaughn. <laughs>